Welcome to Slash Detroit for Thursday, February 6, 2014. Today's episode is brought to you by Sexy Rick Snyder. President Barack Obama will be in our state's capital on Friday to sign the $956 billion Farm Bill after receiving Senate approval on Tuesday. Under normal circumstances, the legislation is passed with Democrats supporting the funding for nutritious assistance programs and Republicans supporting the agricultural subsidies. With the poison political atmosphere in Washington, getting this bill signed is a return to adequacy. Now, if only President Obama would lend some support to legalizing our nation's favorite agricultural product. We could all go celebrate by burning a little couch in East Lansing. Outgoing GM CEO and lifelong male Dan Ackerson made about $9 million last year. Incoming GM CEO and lifelong female Mary Barra will make less than half of that this year with about $4.4 million in total compensation. In fact, Ackerson is staying on as an outside advisor and will still make more money than Barra this year. With Barra being the first woman to lead a major car company, is this two steps forward for women and one step back? Or could this be an appropriate recalibration of CEO pay in an era where the heads of S&P 500 companies make an average of 354 times the amount that their workers do? Is petroleum coke coming back to the riverfront? The Detroit Bulk Storage Company is asking for a permit to legally store materials along the shoreline. That's a problem for Southwest Detroit. Last year, the community fought hard to get the pet coke removed. A company official told the Detroit News they won't be storing pet coke again. Instead, it'll be materials such as salt or limestone. Environmental organizers said, you better put that in writing. The Batman vs Superman movie will begin filming in Detroit this year, and they are hiring. If you're a film professional in hair, makeup, grip and electrical, or set design, fire your resume over to crowncity.prod at gmail.com. The production is expected to spend $131 million in Michigan and will be released to theaters on July 17th, 2015. After months of heated debates and contract negotiations, it's official. The Detroit Red Wings will have a new hockey arena built for the 2016-2017 season. On Tuesday, City Council approved a deal to transfer dozens of city-owned parcels to the Downtown Development Authority, which will own the land the project is built on. However, the 6-3 to three vote didn't come easy. Council members Tate, Castaneda-Lopez, and Jones voted against the deal while pushing for a stronger community benefits agreement. The 2014 Meridian Winter Blast breezes into campus marshes this weekend. The Winter Blast is the largest winter festival in the region, featuring snowshoeing, marshmallow roasting, an ice garden, dog sledding, and of course, the 200-foot-long snow slide. Admission to the Winter Blast is $2 or three canned goods and supports the Matrix Human Services charity. Yesterday, the Detroit Free Press and their lifestyle reporter, Georgia Kavanis, got into some hot water over their coverage of cleavage. Stating that, no matter how you feel about it, cleavage is a bona fide fashion trend, the freep asked, who wears it well and who doesn't? Readers were shown a collection of famous women and the space between their breasts and were asked to vote on the goodness or badness of their mammary voids. Although thousands of readers voted before the poll was pulled down, the poll was less popular on social media and with other news organizations, who felt the Freep had jumped the shark in the quest for precious, precious page views. Well, we here at Slash Detroit could use some traffic too, so we're going to get in on the objectification. On Sunday, Russell Wilson led the Seattle Seahawks to a Super Bowl victory over Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. But who won the Battle of the Bulge? Well, here, Russell flaunts what his mama gave him, but leaves little room for the imagination. Russell, sometimes more is actually more. Peyton, on the other hand, tastefully covered his MVP with a linen accessory that left us wondering, Peyton, what exactly is under that towel? Omaha. Omaha. <laughs>